So based on these two uh, fields, like this is our object worker and the calculated field name contains state, I can look at all the calculated fields for that regard. So let's see, we created a calculated field with the name uh, gender. For example, I created this calculated field. And if I want to erase this, I open the field, go to related options. It is currently being used in this report. First, I have to remove it from the report first. So it is not being used anywhere. So let me edit the report. I remove from here. It's not being used anywhere else. Now I should be able to erase a calculated field. Very used. I still have a usage count. Discovery board sheet. I'm not sure where that uh, other calculated field is being used. But let's say, let's see, uh, we are using it here, the CF higher date formatted. I remove it from the report. Again, CF higher date formatted, it's not being used anywhere. So I should be able to delete the calculated field. So whenever I want to remove a calculated field, I have to make sure that it is not being used in any of the reports. So now as we removed it from the our custom report where we were using it, and if I need to erase this calculated field, I can do that. See if our date is no more available on the tenant as a calculated field which is created earlier. But if the calculated field is in use in any of the reports or integrations or any area on the tenant, we don't have the option to erase it because then it messes up the reports or it messes up your data source that was created based on that calculated field. All right, maintain calculated field reports. So let's look at this. It's may take a while because then it will open up all the calculated fields on the tenant. So give it a few seconds. So on this tenant, I have 7,196 calculated fields set up on this tenant. So with this report, I can see and maintain all the calculated fields. Like I can see the business object, the field it has, the type of field, the function it is using like LRV or date difference or true false condition or an arithmetic calculation. Show in main prompts, if it's set up as yes. And if it is not in use, it will give me an option to delete here as well. If I want to edit this, I can just click on edit. And it will open up the calculated field. I can look at the details for the business object it is using. The operation type, the waiting person, estimated person, then source field, then the condition. Any additional data that it may have, what is it categorized as, what's authorized use, and where it is being used. As it is not being used anywhere, 
it is possible to delete this calculated field as well. So this can also help you identify of an existing calculated field that you may be available for your area that you're looking for. Maybe somebody else created it within the tenant using it somewhere else. And you might be able to use the same calculated field for your uh, use also. So if I want to filter by business object, say by worker, I can see those calculated fields as well, uh, say by I can do my research with this report as well on the existing calculated field. I can filter on business objects, I can filter on field or field type or function and so on. But do keep in mind, if you're going to use an existing calculated field, use as it is. Don't edit it because you don't know how it is being used somewhere else. For example, merit spent in US dollar. I just don't want to go ahead and start editing, editing this field because it is being used in this report or in another calculated field. So it is a source for this additional calculated field. If you want to use this and make some changes to it, try and make a copy of this calculated field, give it your own name, and then make changes to it. Otherwise, this calculated field being used somewhere else within a different report, and if you make changes to this particular field, it will have effect on that report as well. Because Calculated fields can be used on multiple places, in multiple uh, data objects, or multiple reports. So as a best practice, don't just go ahead and change the calculated field that is in use somewhere else. Try to make a copy of that. Uh, in fact, you should make a copy of that calculated field, rename it, put your specific name on it, and then make changes to those calculated fields if you need to. And when I click copy, it will open up the all the objects. It will select the same business object of that field, populate all these sections, but it'll ask me for a new name. Let's say it was maintained spent in US dollar. Let's say I call it CF. Oh, I can see that it's not being used anywhere else, and then I can start using this for my data uh, source of data gathering. Explore the all calculated fields report. In some of the calculated fields, I can create them outside the report, like with the task name called create calc field. Now, when I create it outside of the report, I can use this calculated field in any of the other reports or data sources. But when I create a calculated field within the report, like from here, say I create calculated fields, then this field will be restricted to the report itself. So I cannot use this calculated field outside the report in any other reports. It will be dedicated and specified for this particular report only, the one that I'm creating. Like for example, The CF term date formatted can be only used in ZT worker data CF report. 
I cannot use it anywhere else. But if I create a calculated field from the search bar outside the report on the main tenant, then that field can be usable in any other report. So if I say include report specific calculated fields, so it will give me the report name as well. Area custom report where it is being used. So the GMH APR equity level is being used by this particular report. So with all calculated fields, I have more control over which area, which business object I'm looking at. What is the calculated field name? Which area it is being used? Either it's a calculated field within a calculated field, or if it's a, being used in a report. So custom report and calculated fields. Explore the business objects detailed report. Say super wisely. So with this, I'm looking at a particular business object like worker. Say if I want to add a business object of this supervisory, so this particular business object, if I want to explore all the business object related fields that are available within this business object, so all the reporting fields that are available. So there are 967 fields related to the business object supervisory organization that I can use either in my report or anywhere else within the system. I can find all the related business objects to supervisory organization. I can look at the data sources for supervisory organization. So data source is all organization in org design and then supervisory organization. Then more general data sources. List of data sources of business objects include all of the supervisory organization instance and more. This is data source support only some of the supervisory organization fields, not all of them. But these two are the main primary data sources for supervisory organization. Also, I can look at this business object as to which standard reports are using this supervisory organization data source. And then I can also look at the custom reports as to where these in advanced report or any other kind of report like matrix or anything like that. These are the custom reports. The reports displaying business object at second level. All these standard reports, data sources, and all the custom reports and data sources. So check for pre-existing calculated fields. So when we look at this report, say explore all calculated fields or explore the main calculated fields, what we were doing is that we were checking which calculated fields are available by which area, like uh, the business object or the data source and where are they are being used. So it could be a good practice that you use an existing calculated fields if it satisfies your requirement, create or use the same existing calculated fields for your report. Why would you need a calculated fields? As we discussed a little bit in detail yesterday, that uh, Workday provides majority of the calculated fields along with the data source included in a functional domain. But when an uh, existing calculated field does not satisfy your requirement, such as we made changes to the uh, object called gender 
where we wanted the first three characters or the last three characters starting from the second uh, octet like for male we just selected ale so it was showing ale for male and if you have any such customized requirements where a standard or stock data field does not satisfy your needs at that time you would need to create a calculated fields let's create another custom report or let's use an existing one so here we had hire date and terminated date let's create a calculated field for hire date and use a date increment or date decrement it will be increment or decrement date say so if i want to add or remove number of years add or subtract one year plus month say two months let's say one day so if i'm selecting minus one it'll decrement if i'm just say adding uh, or using the number one or two it will add them let's try to run this report so here we can see that we made changes to the date so we added one year, so it's except for 2000, it's showing 2001. We added one month, so from January, it went to February, and date, it changed from 01 to 28. So it's going one day minus. So our field says days to subtract is one day, months to add is, is two, and year to add is one. So we added two months, so February, and it should be March. But then when we go back one day, it goes to, say, 31st, 12th, 1999. Either add or remove or add or subtract dates you can use a date increment or decrement calculated field as well say for example if you need to run a report where you have a policy for a specific country that you know whenever you hire an employee they are in probation for one month or for 30 days so your actual hire date would be 30 days plus your uh, actual hire date right so if you want to report based excluding the probation period this function may come in handy all right so let's try to edit this in this format actual hire date and let's call this let's edit our field we don't want to add years we want to add one month. So the actual hire date was 01012000, but then we are reporting it as 02012000. So depending on the need or your requirement of what data you're looking for or what data do you want to extract, you can create and use the calculated field functions to uh, transform that data into the required uh, output. So overview of EABs, so let the fun begin. So in this uh, chapter, the agenda is to understand and uh, develop our understanding for what is EAB or Enterprise Interface Builder. What are the components of the EABs? What are outbound EABs and what are inbound EABs? So 
enterprise interface builder is used to either uh, put data into workday by put i mean when we look talk about workday as a tenants we consider that as the system so either we are putting it data in the system or we are pulling data out of the system and sharing it with a, another source so report is like extracting data from workday and then you know having a look at it analyzing it we can download it as excel do our further analysis and we can share it with other people if we need to but when you do uh, when you need to do it in an organized format where you have a set template then you use enterprise interface builder you use a eib to build simple inbound and outbound integration between workday and external endpoints So EIB gives you a framework to build your own integrations based on you, on your unique business needs. The types of uh, EIBs are inbound and outbound. So inbound are importing data into Workday. We upload the data into Workday by using import uh, by using EIBs. Examples are import accounting journals into Workday from an Excel spreadsheet that you provide it as an attachment or import data into Workday from an Excel spreadsheet of, to perform bulk business processes. Example, hiring a group of employees or requesting mass compensation changes. Import transactions for expense credit cards from a credit card issuer. You can then process the transactions in Workday expenses. Some of the examples of inbound AIB could be these. If I need to do a chain job for a bulk of employees, I can use the inbound EIBs. Say, for example, I am acquiring a company, and for that, I need to create job profiles. And before job profiles, I need to create positions. I need to create job recs. And say, for about 500 employees, it is going to be very, very difficult for me to do it via the user interface because I have to do it one by one by one by one. But when I need to do, say, 500 job regs, 500 create positions, 500 job profiles, and 500 hiring or onboarding of employees, it's going to be very tedious to us to do four steps for an employer for 500 employees. That's 2,000 transactions. And for such type of requirements, you can use the Enterprise Interface Builder to uh, complement your changes in bulk. Of course, each individual record would need to be created within the EIB as well, but it's easier to do it via the EIB rather than doing it manually through the GUI. For example, I have conducted a training across my entire population, and I would like to load the training data into Workday for each of the employee. Say, for example, fire safety and hazard training has been conducted throughout the company in all our offices globally to all the employees and it started say about a month back and in batches we've completed for all 2000 and we would like it to reflect in work day as well that's valid for two years so an eib would be a good tool to add trainings for those 2000 employees across the countries the second type of eibs are outbound integrations outbound eibs or export data so we can export data from workday in various formats such as csv google data java script object uh, objection notation json really simple syndicate rss text files or workday xml then we can send the data to an external endpoint by using various protocols such as AS2, email, SFTP, FF, uh, FTP, SSL, or FTP, or HTTP, SSL. An example is export all your active employees from Workday in XML format and send it to an external endpoint with secured FTP. Say, for example, you need to send all your active employees' data to your benefit provider with along with the 
worker details and their dependence and their dependent state of births and their relationship and uh, along with the employee details what is their hard date what management level they are in what is going to be the deductions from payroll what is the company going to contribute so when you're sending all these data it is difficult to manage it through excel sheets and you know manual emails so you create an outbound integration enterprise interface builder to send all these data in XML format through a secured FTP server of the vendor. For example, if you want to export employee hours and billing rates from Workday in CSV format and send it to an external endpoint with secured FTP. Another example could be work export employee headcount and contribution data from Workday in CSV format and send it to a life insurance provided by email. But when you use Workday XML, Workday has a specified format uh, in the way they create XML. Uh, for example, if your vendor supports Workday XML, uh, then we should prefer to use the Workday XML format. So it will have additional data than the standard XML template, specific to Workday integrations or Workday tenant. So okay. the background of this Workday XML is Workday continuously work with many of the vendors out there, the major vendors and even the smaller ones out there globally, they join hands with the vendor directly and create standardized templates that suits their requirements and then configures the workday tenant accordingly to create these standard templates for EIBs, for integrations. So for integrations, the, your core connectors, Workday provides a list or a plethora of uh, core connectors for majority of the vendors out there as a standard template. So Workday puts in a lot of effort and time in building those interfaces and standardizing them with all the vendors out there and continuously update them accordingly as per the requirement changes by the vendor. Uh, you can customize it, of course. Okay. Your customization would be based on the data objects and the fields that you're using. So that's one customization. And say in the XML format by itself, if you need to uh, make those changes, so from the EIB interface, you can do a transformation. With uh, the EIB, when you use a transformation, you can format your data in any standardized format or unstandard format as well. So I'll just discuss the concepts of EIB today. Uh, we'll use our time to do that, but then in the next session, we will actually go ahead and create those EIBs for inbound and outbound. So the components of EAV, Worker Day represents the integration as an EA enterprise interface, which you build and configure before the integration is ready to launch. You can design an EAV by using the wizard design method or create a simple inbound or outbound integrations and a few steps with the wizard, which guides your configuration with appropriate options based on the data flow that you would like to be like whether it's inbound or whether it's outbound, do you have any transformation? Do you have any custom objects that you need to include? Or you want to create an EAB on the standard workday delivered objects or on your custom objects that you have created. So the EAB has three components, get data. This component can indicate the data will be received from external source example, a spreadsheet of a budget data and the location of the data, for example, specific URL or an FTP site. The data that the integration extracts from Workday example of specific custom report. You can get the data from an external source or you can get the data from Workday itself. Then transformation, this component converts the data into a format that Workday or the receiving external endpoint can understand. Workday provides some delivered transformation, but you can also create your own transformation based on your specific requirements. And third part is a delivery. This component defines how Workday imports data from or exports data to an external endpoint, for example, email, SFTP, and web services. 